Welcome to part 13 of the Sonic Adventure 2 Let's Play. And I told you I would get these kind of moments in. And with each character. I told you I could get this all in. Even though I couldn't really. Even though uh, it really doesn't matter. Oh well bragging rights. Even though, even though nobody really cares. And huzzah I was able to get this little cutscene in. Again what I like. Think about it, Sonic Adventure 2 more than Sonic Adventure 1, especially Sonic 06, which I guess is a horrible game to compare it to. But what I like about the cutscenes in this game, when it's the same cutscene, I mean, depending on what character you are, it's on their angle, their perspective. That's what I like. Not different dialogue, not different camera angles. Well, at least, well, you no, know yeah, that's. Alright, yeah, that doesn't really make much of a difference, but still. It makes it feel fresh. Also, what I learned from a little glitch is that, uh... The somersault glitch, I think. I've seen it in a Let's Play. You can actually screw over the AI. He, I think they, I think the guy somersault, somersaulted, and what happened was... The AI doesn't really attack you, but rather it... Well, it, it it does attack you, but only like momentarily. The thing is, though, it'll constantly circle around you. I didn't really show that off, but it's pretty hilarious. But, but the thing with the somersault glitch, when they, they jumped into you, they actually took damage. I have never seen that happen. Ever. That's impressive. <laughs> If I mean, give I give props to SG, SGB for that. That that was just crazy. But now we have one long ass cutscene. Yeah, the thing is, again, the thing is about the uh, the dark side story is that it's definitely more cutscene heavy. But that's for. I guess, you know, it's the dark, dark story. It has, it's telling us about the characters, you know, Shadow, Maria, Egg, well, not Eggman. Shadow, yeah, just Shadow. <laughs> well, just, the. Uh, I don't even know why I'm kind of, like, cracking up here. I mean, this is probably one of the most emotional parts of this game's story. Even though it's not really all that emotional anymore. Especially you know, how things go oh, in the future. Oh man. Because you know. Shadow the Hedgehog. Shadow the Hedgehog sucked. The cane sucked. In every way possible. How can they think it's good? Honestly, how can they think the story in that game's good? And yeah, the reason why I'm going off subject here because same cutscenes really. <laughs> yeah, there's really nothing to go over. Although I will say that that uh that is the ugliest looking girl I've ever seen. And even then, I probably mentioned that and like the first time we saw this cutscene. Uh, oh my god. So, how about that, uh... Actually, no, I can't talk to anyone. Or can I? No other commentators. Just alone. Well, nah, let's not get into that. Yeah, shall we? <laughs> Peace. And, well, most memorable moment in, in Sonic history. Well, one of the most memorable moments. The moon is blown in half. Again, I don't worry, it'll get, it'll get fixed. Or at least, he's, they'll say that only the good side of the moon will be shown. 
just about that excuse is about as poor as Superman 64's kryptonite fog. And yes, I did just say that. Hmm. I just love how Eggman's animations, it's like his mouth movements. And only the top of his not when he when he's talking, the top of his head moves. It was, it was the bottom of his lips don't. Hmm. Station Square is safe from a life threatening missile attack. It, as a reference to Sonic Adventure 1. Who knew that? Who knew that pointless Egg Walker fight hey, will be irrelevant to this game's plot? Or maybe Sega just pulled it. Nah, who cares? Not really a big deal. Oh, they gotta move the story at some point. Okay. So. Hmm. Oh, Sonic. Oh, Sonic games, you may be good, but when it comes to story, you're just all over the place. I mean, seriously, man. Okay, so now we have the second and final driving stage, each if you don't count the minigame cart. And this doesn't look suggestive at all. Any com Anybody that's let's played this game, game always makes note of Rouge's car. Or in how... Interesting the design is Okay, so now we have route 280 he this is basically a harder version of tails is a uh, driving stage I think route 140 that doesn't matter because uh, Let's just say that This driving stage it's it's definitely harder We just like there's pitfalls holes in the middle of the road oh but the thing that makes it obvious, there is a load of 90 degree turns in this stage, and some of the turns don't have walls, so you're so you're just going to be driving through air, and you'll lose, and then you'll just fall off the track, heck, and you'll have to start all over. Oh yeah, no checkpoints, no checkpoints whatsoever, and since there's loads of 90 degree turns, getting Doing the fourth mission is, without a doubt, next to impossible. Well, can I mean I can imagine? I think I only tried out the fourth mission on the stage once. But I dread, but I still dread what I, what would happen if it, if I actually had to do it. Oh yeah, and I forgot not to mention, and sometimes when you're you're driving up up a ramp or whatever. Or you'll actually, he's for some reason just fly. You know, you'll just, you'll just get, you'll just get air, and you better, you better hope that you stay on the road, because if you're not, you'll fly off the track and you'll have to start all over. Oh yeah, and these ramps. <laughs> uh, it's definitely haven't had, it's definitely haven't, and had to. Happened to me recently, but I know this happened to me with the ramps. Sometimes, and I will not have enough speed, and I'll undershoot the ramp and have been falling to the pit below. I don't understand. I mean, I don't understand that, but it hasn't happened to me recently, so I really can't complain too much about that. Okay, and uh, that's uh. But as you can tell, the amount of times I banged on the walls, walls in this stage. Yeah, I probably won't have an easy time getting completing the fourth mission, 
And it's one of the reasons why I won't do a 100% run of this game. I'm sorry, but that's just not happening. Not happening at all. And that is Route 280. Surprisingly enough, I made it through this stage age in one go. With an A rank. Whew. Yep. All said and good. Minigame Kart Racing 2 Player Versus is now available. Okay, so now we have Skyrail. And as, an, as the name implies, like Final Rush, this is the second, uh, this is, this is the other level where it's also rail grinding happy. Where it's also pretty happy with the grind rails. But like I said, I, I find it easier to fall off in this stage. I don't know why. Hey, we also have these springs where constantly holding attack them. They rise. It's just so you can get the higher areas. The works. Or, oh yeah, what I'm trying to do here is, uh, well what I'm doing here is I'm standing here just to make these, just to make these robots appear. How's anyone supposed to find that out on their first playthrough without a strategy guide? But that leads us to the ancient light, to his ancient light ability, although I'm not going to show it off here because we already know how the ancient light works and I almost fell to my death there. But yeah, once I get here and, well not hear it, again I just find it easier to fall off of than Final Rush. I, I don't know why hey, that is. But I don't know, it, it just happens. But honestly, what I don't like about Sky Rail is that sometimes the enemy placement can be a little, a little dickish in some areas. It, it's not, it's not like that to the whole stage, but when it does happen, it gets kind of annoying. And I didn't really know that the shortcut can, was here. <laughs> yep. I just found that shortcut. Uh, you guys probably know about it, but... But yeah, I get here and... Yeah, it's very easy to fall off because of the uh, balance. By the way, there, I passed by the Golden Beetle. Unless if you're a daredevil... Unless if you're a daredevil... Oh, avoid that Golden Beetle, beetle like the freaking plague. Hey, because that... Because, again, if you're not a skilled player, you're most likely just going to end up falling to your death. All for points. Oh, and I... Huh, huh, oh, yeah. Funny trivia about that goal ring there. Or sometimes I would just spin dash for the goal ring. And just to end it quickly. But since the goal ring is like placed like a little bit higher off to where you can actually pass S right under it. So sometimes I would actually... I'd actually spin dash right past it and careen off the pit. Oh my god. Alright. Please tell anyone in the comments section that's watching this, please tell me that's ha please tell me that hasn't happened to you. Please tell me I know oh at least at one point when you guys played this game in that you act they accidentally he passed underneath the goal ring and fell right into the pit. <laughs> Cause I know that's happened to me a couple times. <laughs> and now, but now we have Eggman Steam. In Steam is Eggman in a, a spaced out by punctuation by uh, you know periods. <laughs> Eggman is done by Paul Shortino and it actually gets a remix in Shadow of the Hedgehog and it's actually pretty good. But we all know how the Egg Golem fights and where is Sonic where are Sonic's pupils? Oh and this is the most famous line ever. 
Especially in the Japanese version. And te 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 ya. Definitely one of the most note one of the most memorable lines in Sonic the Hedgehog history. But that is it for part 13, guys. The next time we meet, will Eggman defeat his own creation? Stay tuned for part 14. Have a nice day.